Sarah Lynn, should we start or should we wait a little longer? I think you're good to start whenever you're ready. Okay, great. Well, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Walter Lee. I'm Associate Professor and Chief of Staff at the uh, Department of Head and Neck Surgery and Communication Sciences at uh, Duke University. Uh, it's really a pleasure to be part of this uh, Corona Consortium. Looks like um, uh, there's been some really great talks from some uh, great uh, professors, and I'm, I'm really honored um, to be part of it. This morning, I thought I would um, provide something a little different. It looks like you all have gotten some uh, really deep and uh, good topics, and this is a little different. This comes out of uh, because one of my key roles here at Duke um, is to really think about how do we be better and not only in what we do but also as surgeons and as leaders uh, as human beings. So we believe that this is ultimately uh, based upon uh, virtues. So uh, let me share with you a model that we use at Duke. Uh, this is the professionalism intelligence model. And you can see that virtues is at the core of this model. So virtues such as initiative, integrity, compassion, responsibility, and accountability. Uh, there are many virtues, but these are the core ones that we've focused on here. And uh, these are expressed in different ways. So it's uh, through the different intelligences that you see. Cognitive intelligence, or what you know. Uh, emotional intelligence, which is how you manage your own emotions and other people's emotions. And then finally, the leadership intelligence, which is essentially what you do. Um, and all these three intelligences really help uh, us to become the professionals and the surgeons and the people that we aspire to be. Um, so the topic today, uh, I thought um, I would share my objectives in the form of a riddle. Uh, and if you're uh, not familiar with the topic, then let's see if you can figure this out. So it will be something that won't be on your boards, but may help you prepare for the boards. It takes energy to practice, but in the end, it may save you energy. It doesn't cost anything, but it may be costly if you don't have it. And so what I'm talking about uh, today is uh, time management. We think that uh, time management will affect all the different aspects of um, how you develop, how you study, um, will affect your emotions, and it will impact how you are as a leader. So I wanted to share some aspects of managing time that um, I hope will be helpful for you and that um, give you some food for thought into how you might incorporate some of these uh, um, aspects into your own life. So if you look at a word cloud about the stressors in medicine, um, you can see quite a few things. Uh, patients, of course, is the main thing. But there are other things such as if you look over there um, on the left, lack uh, is there, demands is there, uh, paperwork. If you kind of go uh, towards the right, you'll see family, you'll see years, uh, staff, people, um, and then right underneath patients, there's hours, time. So this whole aspect of time management is a key part of um, having a career in medicine. And how we manage that is going to be really important as we uh, move along in our training and we gain more and more responsibilities and as we care for our patients and also our life outside of medicine. There's a lot of talk now about work-life balance and um, just making sure that we care for ourselves. And this uh, skill set of managing time is very important uh, to that. So you may have heard of this, you know, the phrase, or you may have said it yourself, I just don't have time for that. Or um, I, I, uh, something like that, I just don't have time. And if we take that, it's an interesting phrase because if you think about it, all of us have the same amount of time in a day, 24 hours. So it really isn't so much about time as it is about priorities. We all have 24 hours in a day, 
But the question is how do we use that? And that answer is based upon priorities. So um, priorities are based upon beliefs. You know, what do I believe, uh, what do I, believe um, I need to do or uh, these kind of things. It also is based upon needs. You know, what do I need to do? I need to get to the grocery store or uh, I need to study for this test. And then finally, uh, it's uh, made up of goals, both long and short-term goals. And as we think about priorities and how we do that, uh, these are the aspects that kind of feed into um, how we make those decisions about what is uh, a higher priority than others. I want to introduce to you a term, if you uh, don't know about, it's called telos. Telos um, it comes out of, I'm using it in the tradition of virtue ethics. And uh, Aristotle uh, was, can, is the uh, father of virtue ethics. And Aristotle used telos as the ultimate uh, purpose of something. And so uh, what is your ultimate purpose? And what does that um, mean to you? And how do your priorities then align with that? So leaders must have guiding principles uh, to manage various priorities. Um, we live very rich and fulfilling lives, and there's different priorities and different aspects of those lives. And one thing that guides that is ultimately, you know, what do we feel like our purpose or ultimate meaning is? So this concept of telos is really important as we think about priorities and how we think about how we rank those priorities. Um, so let's uh, start thinking about some of the aspects of managing time. First one is efficient excellence. So if we define efficient as achieving maximum productivity with minimal wasted effort. So achieving maximum productivity with minimum wasted effort or expense. And that expense could come in terms of time, could come in terms of money or energy. Excellence is, comes from the base word of Excel. So in the uh, quality of excelling or uh, being outstanding excellence. So what is efficient excellence? Um, let me walk you through that concept. So here's a graph. At the bottom is time, increasing time, and then on the y-axis is increasing excellence. So there's just different um, um, curves here that I've drawn. So the first curve is you can see over time you kind of rise in excellence until you finally kind of hit a point where you can't get much better. And spending more time on that uh, may increase your, your excellence just a little bit, but it really you've kind of almost maxed it out. So that's uh, one curve. Second curve is less time that it took for you to get to that same point of excellence. So efficient excellence is essentially trying to move curve one to curve two, or uh, trying to left shift it. And one example that I can give from uh, my residency is, uh, you know, trying to think about if, when I got my epistaxis consult from the ER, learning how to take care of that well, and uh, doing that, um, quickly learned that. So that took me time to the point where I could do that pretty well, take care of it, and then um, head back to the call room for some more sleep. Now, efficient excellence then would be me doing that, but then trying to say, how can I spend less time? How can I do that in a way that's quicker without sacrificing excellence or quality? That would be me moving it to the uh, curve one to curve two. And so then it became a game of, okay, I got called from the ER. How quickly can I get back to the call room um, to, to take care of this epistaxis consult, but taking care of it well, because there's no sense in having an issue and having to go back, which brings me to curve number three. So curve number three, you can see, uh, takes less time uh, initially then curve number one to kind of get up, but then you flatten out early. 
So this would be a situation where, yeah, you did things quicker than um, you did before, but the quality or the excellence wasn't there and now you kind of uh, stopped and so it just stayed there. And that's something we want to avoid too. Um, so it's not just about doing it faster or more efficient, it's also about um, doing it with excellence. So efficient excellence. So whatever you do um, as you're going through your daily um, um, duties, your routine, you think about, okay, I'm pretty good at this, but how can I do it in a way that's uh, practicing efficient excellence? Uh, the other concept, uh, another concept to keep in mind is that there's a season, there's a season for everything. And so those priorities change according to that season. So if you're um, taking the, your board examination next month or two, now that's gonna be different in terms of your priorities and how you spend that time than if you just finished your boards. Um, if you have family or if you have kids, there's a season that you're gonna be choosing to spend your time in different ways than if you didn't. And so making um, a constant evaluation about how those things are done and um, where that is in terms of your telos uh, is really important. Those priorities can and should change for each season. Um, so for example, there, my parents' 50th anniversary is coming up in June, and that's a pretty busy uh, time for me. But choosing to spend that weekend with them um, and with the rest of the family is a priority that I put over uh, my other uh, responsibilities and trying to find people who can maybe uh, help cover me during that time. So these are things that we should all keep in mind and, and, and understand that this is natural and that nothing, no season lasts forever. Serving others trumps serving self. Um, so I'll share that perspective changes everything. And the example that I'll uh, give you is that when I first uh, got married, uh, my wife and I were working out kind of details of expectations and duties around the house. And one of them that my wife uh, um, should strong, strongly requested is that the toilet seat goes down after I use it. And initially I'm like, well, okay. <laughs> um, and if I were to think about myself, I'm like, well, that, that's gonna take extra time and effort. And you know, over a span of many years, that adds up. Or I could think about it, okay, instead of serving myself, I'm serving my wife. And so every time I do that, it's just a little something that I do for my wife because I know that she appreciates it. And now I realize that's probably more than you ever wanted to know about what's going on in my household. Uh, but in the era of COVID and um, and washing hands, I thought I'd share with something that was very similar. So this was a, um, a non-scientific study uh, by a book, in a book that I, we're currently reading. And what they did was the author and someone else um, wanted to see about what motivates people to wash their hands. So they made one poster that said, hand hygiene prevents you from catching diseases. And they made a second poster that said, hand hygiene prevents patients from catching diseases. So you have one that's focused on you and the other one that's focused on patients. And what they did was they um, had somebody kind of secretly monitoring um, compared to baseline, how often do people wash their hands and how much soap did they use in the dispenser? So I don't know how long they did this for, but they did show that medical professionals, um, when they were, and they would, and they would um, paste these in different places. So you had one or the other poster at different hand washing places. And compared to baseline, they did find that the poster that was focused on patients versus the one that was focused on you showed a 10% more often washing their hands and that they used 45% more soap and gel. And they speculate that that's because they were focused on others rather than focusing on yourself. Um, so for your own uh, time during residency, 
perspective changes everything. It doesn't necessarily change what you do, but how you use that time and how efficient you are and a motivation behind it may be impacted by perspective. So if you have to study for the boards, if your kind of purpose and meaning is, well, because I want to score high on it, um, that may be different than if your purpose and meaning is, well, I want to be well prepared and well trained to take, care, to take care of the patients that I'll be taking care of. And that perspective can change everything. Foresight to make the investment. So when you think about your priorities, you think about your purpose, um, clearly something that we all have in common is that um, our goal to become an otolaryngologist. And that took a lot of time and energy and foresight to make that investment. Most of us uh, spend over a decade getting to where we are and it just keeps going. And so some things you just, uh, they, that amount of time is just impossible to cram. And that amount of time um, takes foresight. In other words, um, you can either study for a test by trying to cram 48 hours uh, before, or if you made the foresight, you could have studied an hour for 48 days beforehand for this test. And even though the time amount is the same, you made the investment over with because of foresight. Uh, here's an example of something uh, that you recognize as a stock market price. And in 2005, this stock uh, for this company was about $10 um, at the beginning of two, 2006. But by the end of, uh, or, or currently, it's now uh, close to $300. And so if you could say, wow, if I had the foresight to invest, uh, you know, all of us would be uh, multimillionaires uh, with the stock, and this stock is Apple. But it can also go the other direction too. It doesn't necessarily go up, uh, it could go down. So if there are things that you're investing in that you're not really seeing the return on or that it's not really a, a finding out that it's not aligned with your telos or your purpose, then selling that stock or getting out of it before it keeps going down is really important. So having the foresight to say, okay, I've got to drop that and use that time for something else uh, is, is also uh, very important. Organize and schedule. Um, again, you know, we didn't get to where we are by being just haphazard and uh, totally spontaneous. Uh, we organize, we kind of have personalities that um, schedule, have schedules. And that's really important when it comes to time management, because if you plan for nothing, you will achieve it. And having um, things on your calendar to put on there so that you block it out is very, very important. Um, as part of my responsibilities and uh, my uh, academic uh, career, I write grants. And those grants um, need to be scheduled because trying to cram them in at the end of the day when I'm really tired or um, trying to kind of do it between cases just doesn't work well. So on my academic days or other days that I find, um, I'll actually block out a couple hours of time for grant writing and, and be very diligent to try to stick with that. Uh, because again, if you don't schedule uh, that time, that time's going to just slip away and, and you'll, and you'll uh, not be able to uh, make the best of it. So laser focus, you may have um, heard of this concept of, of being in the zone. It's often used in sports or other things. And so I would uh, uh, bet and wager that all of us have had that experience of being in the zone um, where you just, things really are crystal clear and things are, um, um, you're really kind of grasping it and are able to move ahead in a way that, wow, that, that's really very close to excellence. Another related concept to being in the zone is flow. So flow is when you stay in the zone for quite a, that, that kind of that experience of when you're into doing something and you're just so engrossed in it or studying something or doing something that 
hours will go by and then you'll kind of pull out and you'll be like, wow, that, that, would, that took like three hours. Um, I know I experience flow oftentimes in surgery. You know, you're just so engrossed in it. You're just so um, focused, the place are focused that next thing you know, you're like, wow, that, uh, that's already noon already. So these kind of things, um, we, if we learn how to kind of get in the zone quickly, stay in flow, that really helps us to maximize the use of that time to whatever um, uh, project or effort that we're putting towards. Now, I do have to tell you a caveat to this though, and that is that laser focus, um, well, let me give you an example. So just take a moment to try to read through this um, paragraph. So I'll do the same paragraph and see how quickly and easily you can read through the same paragraph. The only difference between these two paragraphs is the space. And the space makes all the difference. And so the caveat that I wanted to share with you about laser focus is you have to know when and where to apply laser focus. You can't just be laser focused all the time. First of all, it's impossible. Second of all, if you're laser focused at, let's say, somebody's birthday party, that's a little bit weird and creepy. And you're like, so laser focused on cutting the cake, you're laser focused on like talking to somebody, and then you're gonna creep people out. So laser focus, you have to know when to do it and where to do it. And knowing that you need breaks in between is critical. So when I was studying for my boards, I would schedule and organize my day uh, according to um, topics and according to a study period. But if you were to look at that schedule, it wasn't that I would schedule three hours of study in the morning and then four hours study in the afternoon. It actually looks something like 30 minutes, five minute break, 30 minute study, five minute break, another 30 minute study, and then 15 minute break. So I had space and break um, interspersed throughout the entire day. So at the end of the day, I actually was able to study more hours uh, without much fatigue. And I can tell you that um, knowing that I had a break coming up in 30 minutes or 45 minutes, I was able to more mentally laser focus than if I said, oh my gosh, I have two more hours of work. Let me go get something to drink. Um, let me check my email. You know, those kind of things. So laser focus is really important uh, for time management, knowing when and where. So this is a process um, that this, the four R's, um, and I, it's pretty straightforward, but it's really important when it comes to uh, maximizing your time. And so uh, it's basically review, ready, recall, repeat, and go. So the application of this is comes when I tell uh, our residents, you know, if I got an OR day on Friday, you know, by the end of the today, you should have done this uh, operation three times. And so what I mean by that is you did it three times because the first time you did it was when you were reviewing the surgical outlets, you were going through the steps in your mind before the actual operation. And then the second time you did it was when you did it with me uh, in the OR, so you were ready to go. And the third time you did it was when you dictated the operative note, because then you were kind of recalling the things that, uh, the steps and the things that you did at the operation. And then you repeat it. And the nice thing about the repeating is that it's not just, it doesn't stay in the same circle, it actually improves. So the second time you do this surgery, you review it, but you review it with all the pearls that you learned from the first time. And then you just keep building this review so that uh, you keep getting closer and closer to that um, uh, excellence uh, curve that I was talking about. So this really helps you build efficient excellence. Imagine if you only did the surgery one time, which is when we went through it in the OR, by the time, you know, the year end, 
you've only done it um, you know, 30 times when you're a co-resident who incorporates this actually has done it 90 times because it's every th three times for every actual surgery. So the four R's, um, just kind of think about that and then I would make notes uh, so that I would review them. And then every time I did the surgery and new pearls that I would pick up um, or different ways that uh, could be done, I would just kind of add it to my notes. And so those review notes uh, became very thorough and um, kept improving. So that's a good way to head to efficient excellence. Now, uh, plan rewards. Plan rewards is really important because um, all of us are human beings that appreciate rewards. So as I mentioned, I spend time um, writing grants. So one thing that I've incorporated is that whenever I turn in a grant, I treat myself to a sushi dinner. I love sushi. And so that's something that keeps me a little bit motivated, uh, knowing that, hey, once I get done and get this turned in, I'll be uh, looking at some uh, sashimi and some uh, tuna and yellowtail and all the other uh, delicious things that I enjoy eating. So don't forget to plan rewards. Whatever goal that you've set before yourself to um, spend, that you've spent that time doing, you've got to plan rewards. And this is it's just a basic thing that uh, for yourself, but also for your team, whatever it is, it really goes a long way. And the next time that you ask or you need to go into spending that time, getting into the zone, um, really working hard, then you'll, you'll kind of develop this natural uh, expectation and reward system that will just feed into how you, how you spend that time. So you want to reinforce the rush, as, as I call it. So the last thing I'll share with you is, you know, you've heard this said, but it's so important that it's worth um, repeating. And that is that time is really a gift. It's a gift because we don't, um, we, we don't know how much time we have. And I checked yesterday, uh, the number of COVID deaths in the world was um, 257,000 deaths. And in the US, we're very close to 72,000 deaths from COVID. So those are people that, um, you know, six months ago, four months ago, would have never imagined uh, that their time would be ended by COVID. And, you know, that goes for all of us. We just don't know uh, how much time we have. So when you kind of think about these things that we do and how we spend this time, and how it fits not only in our goals, short-term and long-term, but also in the kind of person that we would want to become and be, then uh, keeping this in mind really does help you figure out, well, what are the priorities and what are um, not priorities? So I'll, I'll leave, uh, the, I'll finish this by kind of asking you, well, what is it about your goals and needs and, and purpose that you need some time to think through and to really make sure that that time that you're spending is proportional to those goals uh, and aspirations that you have. And um, I, I wish you all the best in your um, training and your future career. Thanks so much. Thank you, Dr. Lee, that was great. Yeah, I, I don't know if we have, I guess we have time for um, questions. If oh, anyone, absolutely. Uh, if anyone has any questions, they can use the chat or the Q&A function. So with that, I guess, uh, well, it doesn't look like anybody has any questions, so I'll leave the rest of the time for you guys to spend <laughs> until your next lecture. Thank you again. Sure. Thanks, everybody.